Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone patch 23.4 is coming on Wednesday and in this video I have a privilege to reveal some of the contents of the upcoming big mercenaries patch. As you may have guessed, our queen is arriving to Hearthstone mercenaries. It's Queen Azara herself, coming with all of her rage. But a queen does not walk alone, a queen needs her bodyguard. And Fathom Lord Caratresh is more than happy to guard our queen. But a queen needs more. So there's not just one Naga coming to mercenaries. It's not just two Nagas coming to mercenaries. It is a whopping six Nagas coming to Hearthstone mercenaries. A full party of Nagas. Two casters, two protectors, two fighters, two of everything. And rarity-wise, three of these are rare and available to pretty much all players. Two of them are epics and, well, our queen, obviously, a legendary. So coming in patch 23.4, we have Lord Slither Spear, a rare fighter whose abilities are Slithering Rage. Attack an enemy, summon a 1018 Hungry Naga with Divine Shield and Rush. So a little bit reminiscent of the way Nefarian attacks, but this time the Hungry Naga has Rush, so it doesn't necessarily attack the same target, it can also go to another target, which can often be a benefit over what Nefarian is able to do. And second ability, you lift bro, gain plus 5 attack. If you control another naga, gain plus 5 more attack and then attack an enemy. And finally, enough of this trash. Speed 4 cooldown 2. Destroy a summoned minion without triggering its death rattle. Deal its attack to all enemies. So we're now seeing more interaction with summoned minions. We have Nesot from the previous event and Nesot is able to take over minions and here Lord Slither Spear is able to destroy them. And if you equip your Lord Slither Spear with Sharp Idea, passive, after an enemy minion is summoned, refresh to enough of this trash, which has cooldown too, so it will again be instantly available. Lord Slither Spear's other equipment, Unleashed Eel, Hungry Naga has plus 5 attack, so it will be a 15 18 Naga, and Fishy Cauldron, passive plus 4 attack, this smoke always deals critical damage to Murlocs. So, in case Murlocs are bothering you, Lord Slither Spear is the mercenary to call. Our second rare Naga is Tide Mistress Atisa, a rare protector. With abilities Wave Crush, a frost ability, deal 14 damage to an enemy. If they have already acted, give them plus 5 nature weakness. Many Nagas have abilities that are more powerful if your opponents are fast. So Nagas just like to take it slow. Tide Mr. Rathisa also has Riptide, a nature ability, deal 10 damage to an enemy, after an enemy attacks this turn, repeat this damage. And Captive Tides, another nature ability, deal 20 damage to all enemies, increased by 7 for each other Naga you control. And because Nagas can also summon more Nagas, you can have a lot of Nagas and a lot of damage from Captive Tides. Cooldown 3, by the way. Now that we have had the refresh rework, where refresh can be controlled better than before, so it doesn't always completely refresh abilities, we're also seeing Blizzard start to experiment a little bit more with longer cooldowns. And Tide Mr. Satisa's equipment, Warlord Paryesh, Bellcry, summon a 1224 Naga with Taunt, Clutching Hatred, Riptide deals 5 more damage, and Harpsichord, Passive, whenever this mech takes damage, refresh one on captive tides. So you're potentially able to refresh that captive tides real quickly and just keep blasting with huge AoE. And our third rare Naga is also a protector, Fathom Lord Caratresh. With abilities of Tidal Strike, attack an enemy and summon a 816 Naga, a Fathom God. With Frost Combo, summon another Naga. Frost Combo and Atisa had a Frost ability, so you can actually put these three rare Nagas into a single comp. And that will be a comp that will summon a lot of Nagas, and those will be attacking all over the place, and then Atisa will be dealing lots of AoE damage, because there are so many Nagas on the board. Fathom Lord Caratrish's second ability is Cataclysmic Bolt, deal 20 damage to the lowest health enemy. And finally, Blessing of the Tides, Gain plus 5 attack for each friendly Naga, and if you have a ton of Nagas, you can see where this is going. If the Smirk has less than 40 health, gain plus 10 attack instead. And Caratrice's equipment are Fathom Lure. After a friendly Fathom Guard attacks, restore 12 health to the Smirk. Hullbreaker, Cataclysmic Bolt, deals 20 damage to adjacent enemies, but has plus 1 cooldown. And Tidewalker's Brooge. Blessing of the Tides affects all your Naga and summoned minions, but has plus 2 cooldown. 
So as you can see, Blizzard is now moving to use that design space opened up by longer cooldowns, shorter refreshes. And Nagas make use of that one, make use of tokens, make use of speed, especially going slow. As for our epic Nagas, we have Lady Vashi, an epic fighter. Abilities, Electrify, a nature ability, deal 22 nature damage to an enemy. Damage is reduced by the current speed of their action. So the faster the enemy, the more damage they take. And Maiden's Poison, another nature ability, deal 5 damage to an enemy, bleed 10. And Reflex Shot, a fell ability, deal 12 damage to all enemies, if they have already acted, deal critical damage. So Nagas have nature abilities, they have fell abilities, they have frost abilities, lots of different spell schools in play. And Lady Vashi's equipment, Icy Grasp. Your Naga take four less damage until they act each turn. So slower Nagas, less damage. And Witch's Mantle, passive enemies affected by bleed receive five less healing, so it's more difficult to remove that bleed. And Fell Cauldron, Reflect Shot also gains plus four fell damage. The second epic naga is Charjira, the Sea Witch, and ability Witch's Curse, Shadow ability, okay, Shadow to all spell schools are here, deal 12 damage. If it already acted, its attack is permanently halved, round up. Okay, so fast mercenaries that are attacking, not going to attack that much, you know. Freezing touch, freeze a character. They are immune while frozen, they deal 10 damage to your enemies when they lose frozen. So you can either protect your own characters from taking damage by freezing them, or you can prevent your opponents from acting by freezing them, but if you freeze an opponent then you can't damage them that turn. And then Wave Treasure. Wave Treasure is a Naga, 1728, Rush, passive has plus 10 attack for each frozen character. And Sarzura's equipment are Surf Chilled, which is cursed deals an additional 5 damage. Upstart Acolyte, passive plus 20 health, and whenever a friendly character is frozen, freeze a random enemy. So you can protect your own characters with freezing touch, and that will also freeze random enemies. Pretty sweet. And then Ring of Sluggishness, passive shadow abilities are 4 speed slower. And finally we have our queen, and what a queen this is. Queen Azara, a legendary caster with arcane abilities and shadow abilities like all spell schools are here. And Azara's ability, Shifting Tides, arcane, deal 18 damage, damage increased by plus 3 for each spell school cast this game. And Mage Paramount, an arcane ability, gain plus 3 spell damage whenever an enemy casts a spell, plus 4 resist to its spell school this turn. Okay, and Vainglorious Rebuke, a shadow ability, deal 10 damage to all enemies, damage is increased by the final speed. This ability gets 2 speed slower this turn whenever another ability is used. So the faster your enemies are, the more they get to act, the more Azara just keeps stacking up that power and then unleashes it with the Vainglorious Rebuke. And Azara's equipment is like, which equipment are you even going to use? Saladat. Passive, whenever you cast a shadow ability, restore 6 health to your characters. Yes, that's Lifefruit Staff from Malfurion, except that it's in shadow. It's a little bit awkward though, sometimes with Azara, because Azara has a cooldown 1 shadow ability. Azara doesn't have a shadow ability that she can use every turn, but you could pair Azara up with some shadow mercs, then you would get at least 12 healing every turn, and even more when you use Vainglory's Rebuke. But Azara has more, the Tide Stone of Golganeth. Passive, this merc has plus 1 plus 6 health for each Naga in play or on your bench. So Azara, the biggest, beefiest merc of all time, with the Tidestone, yeah, looking pretty healthy, I would say. Or you can use Shara's Fall, Queen Scepter. The first time this merc dies, steal 6 health from all characters in play and return to life. Queen Azara, Definitely worth the legendary title. Overall, Nagas, one legendary, two epics, three rares. Not too difficult to collect. And yeah, the queen, the queen is simply in a league of her own. And these mercenaries will be added to hostile mercenaries with patch 23.4 on Wednesday. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.